We have to talk about a cruise line that, to be honest, I initially considered to be the worst, newest cruise line operating within the United States. And while there may be some merit to that, it appears that they have had a master plan all along, as they are expanding. While it is, of course, normal and expected for any establishment or business to have plans to grow and expand as they move forward into the future, it does appear that Margaritaville at sea is building something that is not only going to bring in the lovers of the brand Margaritaville, the pair heads I'm talking about. It's also going to potentially start bringing in new first time cruisers, cruisers that are potentially vacationing on a budget, or those of which that don't really have a lot of time to vacation, essentially carving a lane of its own. A few months ago, it was confirmed that Margaritaville had purchased an old ship from Carnival Cruise Line's Italian line Costa. The ship was originally known as the Costa Atlantica, however, the name has since been changed to the Margaritaville at Sea. Islander. Now, the ship was initially launched in the year 2000, and it holds just over 2,000 passengers. Margarita, at this point in time, in preparation for a 2024 launch, is now doing an extensive, aggressive makeover to the ship. That way, they can make it beautiful and pretty for all of the new adventurers that want to take the chance and go on this brand new cruise ship along with the pair of heads that already love the Jimmy Buffett brand, Margaritaville. Margaritaville, the brand, has been around for a pretty long time, a couple decades. In fact, initially started in January of 1985, and well, it has been going strong ever since with its blue flip flops and parrots all over the world. However, it wouldn't be until recent, I'm talking about 2022, that they would merge with the once Bahamas Paradise. They would take the ship that was with that fleet, the Grand Classica, and turn it into the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. That ship in particular, which just so happens to be the only operating cruise ship under the Margaritaville at Sea fleet, was initially launched in 1991 so it's obviously a seasoned cruise ship it's gone under multiple lines and multiple names it was initially also part of costa cruises along with the now sea islanders so they both come from the same place it was once called the neo classica and then the grand classica and then now to this present day has been turned into the margaritaville at sea paradise i also went on that ship on two separate occasions before it became the margaritaville at sea paradise when it was the grand classica so i know that ship from the inside and out and I gotta say when I was initially invited by Margaritaville to go to the resort first before I jumped on the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise cruise ship I was extremely disappointed I do have my reviews here up on this channel I will link it right up here somewhere if you want to see it but the main premise of my concern was the fact that the branding didn't exactly match up when you look at the resort and the brand as a whole versus being on the cruise ship the main issue from the start was that the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise cruise ship was old like I said it was built in 1991 which means as far as decorating to copy Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville's likeness, it would take a lot of time and a lot of money, and unfortunately, that would never happen. You see, the ship, the Margaritaville Sea Paradise, was supposed to launch in 2022, right around April time. They said they were going to do some renovations, there was the delay, and then it would then launch in May. What I noticed when I got on board the ship was that it was damn near the same ship as when it was the Grand Classica. Now, don't get me wrong, I wasn't expecting a brand new new cruise ship with all the fixings. However, if they were going to rebrand, I was hoping they would do a little more than just slap a couple drops of paint all over the place. And that really was what it was. There was still the rust that was there. The food was a little bit better. As far as the shows, it didn't compete with Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville at all when it comes to their resort area. And well, a lot of people considered it to be a flop, a disaster. However, believe it or not, even when I was on board, there was some silver lining, a light at the end of the tunnel if you will because one thing I noticed was that there were a lot of new cruisers on board that were legitimately happy with what they got and what they had paid for they were some of them anyway balling on a budget some of them won a free cruise which is something I've said often when it comes to that ship if you were to win a free cruise that's essentially the ship that they would put you on some people considered it for a two-day cruise out of West Palm Beach over to the Bahamas and back it was a nice little getaway they also had the cruise and stay package where you could go on the ship like a ferry stay over in the Bahamas for a couple days and come on back so naturally there was an audience in which people found margaritaville at sea attractive regardless of how old and potentially rusted and worn down the ship was fast forward to where we are now it does appear that margaritaville at sea is building a little bit of positive momentum as they have announced their new ship the sea islander starting in june of 2024 will be completing 
four and five night sailings out of Tampa, which by the way, I live in Tampa. I live right down the street. I will be on board. And yes, I did say I would never sail on the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. I definitely still at this point would not. However, considering it's a new cruise line, a new ship, I'm definitely going to give it a try as I have already booked a back to back on the inaugural sailing I'll be on. And then the one after that in June, looking at the responses, a lot of people have been kind of split 50 50. There are people, like I said, that have gone on and had an amazing, unforgettable time and they would gladly do it again, even if it is on the paradise as opposed to the new ship to see Islander. Meanwhile, you have other people that are saying they wouldn't give it a try, but they also understand the lane that is potentially being created. We all know that there is a such thing as budget airlines, of course, in the United States. You got your Spirit, your Frontier, your Allegiant over in Europe. You got Ryanair, you have EasyJet, you got Wow Air, you name it. What if we are creating a time in the world where there is a budget cruise line where nobody complains about how cheap everything is because you get to a point to where unless you're comparing it to the regular cruise lines by the likes of Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, or even the premium lines like Celebrity, which I'm sailing on right now, their new ship, The Ascent, or Virgin Voyages, you now have separate categories to dissect from where you are essentially and hopefully going to get what you paid for. And if you decide to go budget, well, you're going to have to accept what comes with it. To wrap this up, I think this is great because this will potentially alleviate some confusion. There are a lot of people out there that may sail with a premium line, again, like Celebrity or Virgin, or maybe they'll sell Royal Caribbean and get like a junior suite or something of that nature. And they consider cruise lines, like let's say a carnival to be a budget cruise line, which personally I do not consider because yes, you can find potentially inexpensive and budget like deals, but I wouldn't consider the line as a whole to be budget. Meanwhile, Margaritaville at sea could potentially fit that category as the price of the cruises are only in the hundreds depending on whether you get a regular cabin or maybe even a suite then obviously yeah you would have to stretch your dollar a little more but nevertheless you still have the category potentially being created I do believe that if things do go down this way in the long run not only will it be great for Margaritaville it would also be great for the entire cruise ship industry because it could usher in a whole nother demographic and audience of brand new cruisers that fall in love with cruising for their vacation option however I do believe there is going to be some conditions and caveats when it comes to Margaritaville one they do have to do some quality control by that I mean if they are going to use Jimmy Buffett's may he rest in peace his likeness as far as the brand with Margaritaville and the Parrotheads and all that they're going to have to make sure that there is some similarities as far as the quality, as far as what people expect when it comes to Margaritaville. They will also have to, I guess, do some little upgrades here and there to make sure that things are too satisfactory and nobody's going to come back and complain. Well, people are going to find something to complain about, no doubt about it, but you at least want something consistent to the point to where if there is an overall issue, it can be addressed, rectified, and of course, fixed to make a better overall product. But that's what I got for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. Below. Of course, hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And no, as usual, I love and appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you later. Take it easy.